Amen. We want to welcome you out to the Potter's house tonight. We're going to have a, a good time worshiping the Lord. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to worship the God we serve today. Let's sing that song, Behold He Comes. Oh, hold on. Did you change it up? Praise the Lord. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> Jesus is coming back. You know that, don't you? <laughs> All right. All right, let's sing that song. Behold, he comes riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. And the trumpet calls, so lift your board. Year of Jubilee, out of Zion, hear salvation. Behold. Shining like the sun, and the trumpet calls, so lift your voice. Year of Jubilee, out of Zion, here salvation comes. Who was and who is and who is to come? Who was and who is and who is to come? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and the trumpet calls. So lift your voice, year of jubilee, out of Zion Hill Town. Let's all stand. Shining like the sun, and the trumpet calls. So lift your voice, year of jubilee, out of Zion Hill, salvation comes. Who was and who is and who is to come? There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and the trumpet calls. So lift your voice, hear of jubilee, and out of Zion Hill, salvation. Sing it out loud, hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. You never change, you never fail, oh God. And true are your promises. True are your promises. You never change, you never fail, oh God. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Wide is your love and grace. Wide is your love and grace. You never change. You never fail, oh God. Wide is your love and grace. Wide is your love and grace. You never change. You never fail, oh God. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. So we raise, 
So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Everybody now, hallelujah. You were, you are, you will always be. sing that song this is my desire to worship the king hallelujah this is my desire
upon you and a thousand generations and your family oh, hallelujah. and their children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you God, your grace and all that you have for us today, Lord. We honor you and we praise you. What a privilege it is to be in the house of God on a Wednesday night. It's something about being born again. Are you with me? You know, if you're saved and you know it, shout amen. amen. Tell you what, it's good to be saved. We have uh, some prayers that we're going to go before God with. Some needs, these are on the list for salvation. We have many needs for healing, believing God, especially for Isaiah Jones, amen, that God would continue, can continue to heal him. Again, he doesn't have cancer. He's just going through chemo now, and uh, the chemo has affected him, but we're believing God for complete healing, and uh, he gets out of the hospital like ASAP, amen. Let's also believe for Becky Wilson, that God continue to touch her and heal her from cancer, we bind that spirit. Can you say amen? Let's also believe God for these requests, special requests. Say amen. That God's blessing be upon this family. As well as praying and believing God for our headship of Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Tom Payne, our pastor, Pastor Jeff Day, and his assistant Gerald. And believing God for great things there in our mother church. Pray for our church. Continue blessing, favor, and dominion. Let's also believe God for our baby works, all that God is doing in these churches. And remember the... Pray for Stephen and Marty, the revival that's upcoming on Friday night. We're believing God for breakthrough and blessing and favor. Amen. Let's also believe God for our sister churches. Amen. That God's blessing be upon them in their areas of labor. We continue to believe God for our, our evangelists out of our mother church, Mel Montoya, Mark Benavides. God's blessing upon their ministry. As well as Josh and Jessica Montoya and Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam. Blessing and favor and dominion there. Please pray for Ray and Sally Sanchez in Ecuador. God continue to raise up uh, disciples uh, to take that work very soon. We're believing God for great things there. Amen. Also pray for the churches in India. These are the newly planted churches in India. That God's blessing be upon them and favor. We do pray always. Amen. For Russia and leadership in Russia. And their baby works in Odessa, Ukraine. Believing God for these, this war-torn area that God will bless them, help them. Please pray for Israel as we do and believe God in these last days, God's favor and dominion upon that nation. Pray for our nation, first responders, military, our leaders, amen, and the upcoming elections, all that's going on. Just God's grace upon this nation, can you say amen? Uh, maybe you have a need that you didn't put up there, but you have an unspoken request you lift up to the Lord. Uh, we're going we're gonna to believe God for these needs. And then I'm going to ask if I could, amen, get tighter to come and open us a word of prayer. Let's believe God together. Father, we're praying, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we're believing for these miracles of healing. We bind cancer. We take dominion over cancer and the effects of cancer and the medicine that is taken, the effects upon Isaiah. We rebuke them. We pray and plead the blood of Jesus. We pray for everyone that is not saved, God, that you save on this list. Have your way tonight. God, move in the Holy Ghost. 
Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we're coming to you, lifting up all the needs that are that are needed, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will have your way in this place tonight, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that you will clear our hearts and clear our minds, Father God. I pray, Father God, against the a mind-binding spirit that comes to still kill and destroy our joy, Father God. I pray that you ascend it to the abyss, Father God. And I pray, Father God, as we worship you and read through the word, Father God, you'll give us discernment, Father God. I pray that you will speak to us through your word, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that we not just be readers and listeners of your word, but I pray, Father God, that we become living Bibles, Father God, speaking life, speaking truth everywhere we go. And I pray, Father God, for the brother Isaiah, I pray that you continue having, having your way with him, Father God. God, I pray that for a miracle for him, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that you anoint the pastor's word and anoint this service, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We worship you. Amen. Just take this time to greet one another. Amen. Do we have the Zambia picture as well on that? Okay, good deal. Amen. We have some announcements. Let's go ahead and show those in the backboard there. So, you know, uh, this uh, Friday, we're going up to uh, Socorro for the revival. The church leaves right at 6 o'clock because it starts at 7. 
and it takes right up at an hour to get there. So the church is le the church van leaves right at six. If you're here at six oh one, you're probably gonna miss it. So make sure if you want to go in the van or you want to take tag along in your own vehicle. Then Saturday the same thing, but we are having a prayer at three thirty. Can y'all say three thirty? Can y'all say you're gonna be here at three thirty? Come on, somebody. <laughs> three. Homeboy's going to get here at 3 and open the door. Praise the Lord. He's going to clean the sidewalk and the, and the whole parking lot for us. So when we get here at 3.30, there will be prayer. And then at 4 o'clock, we're going to do a street meeting in the corner. We have lots of flyers tonight. Please, before you leave, uh, we need to get a handful of flyers. Take them with you. We ordered quite a few flyers, so just take them with you at your work, where you live. Frank, you're, uh, they're gonna, you're going to outreach your whole apartment complex, right, Frank? Come on, somebody. And so... He says, I want to I tear it up over here, Pastor. So <laughs> praise the Lord. We're going to do that. So remember, take some flyers, man. We don't have a big outreach team coming to help. We're just doing our own thing. We're going to go out the street corner, street preach, give out flyers on the street corner. If you've never been to a street meeting, just come. You don't have to get on the mic. We don't force nobody on the mic. But if you want to get on the mic and preach, you'll be blessed. Uh, give your testimony. It's really testimony on the corner, just letting people know what Jesus Christ is doing in your life. Um, and then, of course, uh, that evening, the van leaves again Saturday for uh, the Socorro Revival. And then we start revival here with Pastor Evangelist Ralph Blanco. And it starts Sunday morning. So come, get your spot, get your seatbelt ready. He's going to preach. He's going to have a good time. He's been having some tremendous meetings, uh, really good words. God's helping him. So he's going to help us. Can you say amen to that? So you come Sunday morning, Sunday night through Wednesday, and then Friday we have the rally, uh, rally here at the Mother Church, and uh, you want to be a part of that, you want to go, you'd be blessed. We have leadership coming to minister at 7 o'clock that evening. I believe it's 7 o'clock, correct? Y'all remember? Take a peek at that list in the back for me. But I believe it's at 7 o'clock Friday night. And so you want to go be a part of that. Get there a little early because it's good people from Arizona, Texas will be there. All of New Mexico. And 7 o'clock, amen, you want to be there. Be a little early. That's Friday night. And then, uh, of course, this Saturday, uh, that'll be Friday night. It'll be the next week, sorry. Next Friday. Not this Friday, but next Friday. Y'all get all that? I got y'all mixed up now? Amen. Now I'm all mixed up. <laughs> This Friday, Socorro. Thank you. Are you going? Come on, somebody. Look at that. Sheesh. Amen. He says, you know. <laughs> so don't forget those announcements. Amen. Let's give God a clap offering as we take an offering. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. God, we do worship you. We do honor you. Amen. And tonight, I really do um, uh, want you to sit, just focus on this Zambia picture. Amen. Amen. This beautiful family that's ministering the word of God and that nation, the Moffats, um, believing God's blessing upon them. I know it's a little blurry, but you can kind of see what's happening there in the streets. We're going to be doing crusades in those streets. We're going to be uh, uh, believing God for miracles for these churches. And I'm going to be preaching uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night for this particular church. He's the second largest church in that area. Uh, he has, I believe, 15 or 12 churches out of his church. And uh, these men are, are tearing it up in that part of the world. This is Pastor Day was oversha overshadowing all those churches, the leadership there of about 68 churches, I believe. And so he still is, really. He still overshadows that whole work. And so we're going to go. We're going to labor. But we need your support to give towards that so we can do that. Amen. How many you know we need to share what God has given us? We need to be a blessing to this nation, to these couples that are there, and to those people that we're going to minister to and God's going to heal. I believe we're going to have great reports of what God is doing. So you give towards that. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to do that faithfully as I have been. I believe God is blessing me for it too. Amen. So let's give. Let's be a blessing. And I'm going to ask if I could, Vernon Jackson, could you ask God's blessing on both gift and giver, please? Swing beat. Come on, everybody. 
Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you bless me, turn my life around, set my feet upon the solid ground. Can you believe what the Lord has done in me? Can you believe? Can you believe what the Lord has solid ground can you believe what the lord has done in me amen give god a clap offering amen thank you jesus for your goodness and your grace amen if you have your bibles if you'd like to turn your bibles to proverbs 12 11 and uh, also john 15 and 16 i want to minister a sermon i've called chasing empty dreams amen chasing empty dreams and we you know we all dream i mean heck when you get up uh, 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 or you get going as a young man you're a young girl you you know you, we start realizing a little bit about life and you hear stories from uh, your, your your family your grandparents uh, or maybe you you watch rocky come on somebody and so you know all of a sudden now you start to dream we're dreamers aren't we we're all, God put it in us to dream, and God placed it in our hearts to be dreamers. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that God wants us to dream big, and he wants to dream right. When we begin to dream and chase empty dreams, and can I tell you, empty dreams is a scary thought. I don't know about you, but I don't want to chase empty dreams like I used to. Let's read our text in Proverbs 12 and verse 11. The word of God says, those who work their land will have plenty of food. But the one who chases empty dreams is not wise. John 15 and 16 says, you did not choose me. This is Jesus speaking. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking God your favor, dominion. Father, we're praying blessing, insight by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. First of all, Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Listen, this is, this is a revelation that you and I should get, that you're in this place, and you ain't in here by accident. God don't make accidents. Are you with me? In fact, you've been chosen by God to be in this place. And he has given a calling upon each one of our lives. Whether you're saved or not, listen to me. God has placed something in your life. Because for before salvation, amen, I was just living life. And I was chasing empty dreams. Hello. You know, I have a testimony to, and I, I've given in this church, but I was thinking about some of the new converts. And as I was minute, thinking of this sermon, uh, amen, and I, I just want to share. When I was five years old, I could remember uh, just a few houses down. It was, uh, it was in the summertime, uh, amen. It was, uh, actually, it was, it was warm, I should say. The, the other kids are out to school, but I was five years old. They wouldn't let me swim. So I snuck over there. And jumped in the swimming pool. And I began to drown. And I, I'll never forget that moment. You know, things stick in your mind forever. Uh, in those kind of moments where I was in shock and I was drowning. And I realized I was drowning. And the lady that lived at the house, uh, she happened to be in her den cleaning the windows uh, and when she seen splashing in her pool uh, and she ran out, uh, she dove in uh, and she saved me. Listen, I was chosen a way back then at five years old. God had already chose me. Are you with me? And so this woman just so happened to be cleaning her windows when this youngster decided to go jump in the pool. Are you with me? 
you know, listen, God spared my life so many times that I can't even number how many times he spared my life. And this is even before salvation at the age, amen, of 14 years old, I, could, I, commit, I tried to commit suicide. I played Russian roulette with my father's pistol, amen, and after the third try, after the the second try, the third third time, I look uh, and I noticed, uh, amen, I couldn't pull the trigger. And I looked and sure enough, it was in the chamber uh, and I would have uh, died that day. But I was chosen. Are you with me? It was the grace of God. See, you have a story, amen, because of the grace of God. You have a testimony because some of you, amen, were this close to death. You should have died. Many of us were in hospital rooms at times. I hung myself by the grace of God. My fingers got caught where the cord was, and I kicked the chair up and dangling for a time. And I'm in my spirit saying, God, I don't want to die, but it was too late. And then it broke. Because God chose me. See, you have a testimony. God chose you. You're not here by accident. Some of you think, oh, it was, you know, uh, this semi that hit me and I went off the road. It just so happened, you know, I lived. I I was just lucky. And then the time they shot us, shot at us, uh, hey, man, it just didn't hit me. And the time the homeboy tried to shank me and I'm dodging, hey, I was just too fast. You know, when the truck blew up, uh, amen, the piece of metal hit me in the face, uh, amen, had me in the hospital. Oh, I just, you know, the doctor said a half, a quarter of an inch higher, a quarter of an inch lower, you would be dead today. Oh, just, it just so happened. No, no, it didn't happen. Just so happened. God chose you. He chose me. Are you with me? This is God. He knew exactly where we were, and we were chasing empty dreams when he chose us. Hallelujah. remember as an evangelist I was questioning my calling because at one time it was a struggle the first time I evangelized amen it was a struggle I had young children I would have to say bye to my wife and go for two weeks at a time amen then I'd come back for a week with my family and and see them and then I would go off for two weeks amen and there would even be stuff happening my wife wouldn't even tell me because she knew I wouldn't be able to you know I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd say see you later alligator I'm gonna go home you know it was like I was struggling I'm like, God, what am I doing out here? You know, it was a big struggle for me. But God reminded me of my dream. Are you with me? He reminded me that when I was dreaming to be a boxer, amen, I was dreaming to be a world champion. This was my dream. It was my desire. This is everything I put my heart into. Amen. Just like you, you had dreams. And at that point, God saved me. I'll never forget going, amen, my very first pro fight, uh, Mike Tyson's main event, uh, amen, and I'm the first uh, fight on the undercard of Mike Tyson. Uh, he's fighting uh, a 10 round, with his. I think it was his first pro fight in Vegas. And so they had guaranteed me that I would have 10 wins guaranteed to get a shot at the ESPN title. Back then they had ESPN titles. And they were like, guarantee me, yeah, we're going to set you up. Basically, they know your talent. They know where you're from. They know these, they, they scout, and they have a really good uh, projection that you're going to win by your history, your boxing history. It, you, they do the math. They figure, you know what, we can hook you up. Well, it's right there, man. It's three days before the fight. I'll never forget. I was psyched. I was a machine. Everything is working. I mean, everything's just right. I'm pumped. I'm excited. My dream is coming to pass. Amen. Listen to me. It was real. I could taste it. I could smell it. This is the real deal. Amen. But before I got in the ring with Richard Fowler, Richard Fowler was a fighter, left-hander. He was a very good professional fighter. He had a lot of fights already, and he used to punish me in the ring. I hated sparring this guy. Every time he hit my body, he was like, man, I don't want to spar this dude. It's a little heavier than me, fast, left-hander. But that day, that day, man, I'm going to get in the ring. And I said these words to God. I'm not born again. I'm not saved. But he chose me. He knew me. 
I used to talk to God. I used to ask him questions. Amen. I used to seek him. The Bible says you seek, you will find. Amen. Listen to me. And I remember praying, God, if this is your will for my life, I want to be a pro. I want to not only be a pro, I want to be a world champion. If this is your plan for my life, then let it be so, man. I was psyched. I got in that ring. You got to understand, this is my dreams finally coming to pass. All the hard work, all the labor, all the, it's finally going to happen. Amen. And I get up in the ring, man, and I'm psyched. And then I'm, I'm, I'm just, me and this dude are getting it down, but I'm taking it to him, man. I'm for the first time, for the first time, it's like I'm quicker than him. And I'm catching him, and he, he's missing me. I'm just, pa pa pa. everything is happening. And I'm like, whoa, I felt so, all the ball bearings are working just right. And I'm taking it to this guy, and all of a sudden, my ankle goes out. So they take me to the hospital that night. Tendinitis in your ankle. And they say, my coach is like, well, he has a fight in two days. I mean, this is three days out. Two days, we're going to go to Vegas. He has a fight, pro fight, and the doctor said, I wouldn't do it. Because I think an inflamed just like that, he's going to have the same problem. And it's your first fight. So they canceled the fight. And then I got saved. <laughs> I became born again. It's like when I got saved, it didn't I didn't just oh, go to church. No, somebody told me about Mike Cerna. Told me about Jesus. And when I prayed that sinner's prayer, boom, it hit me. And I remember telling him, whoa, man, that was wild. He said, bro, God touch. I said, no, man, it acid. <laughs> I said, man, it was just a bad trip. It just comes back and visits me once in a while. Hello? And he goes, no, God touched you, man. And I said, you think so? Yeah, God touched you. And I went from that place, and I'd never been the same. I went home, amen, began to tell my family about Jesus, telling my wife about Jesus. She thought I lost my head, but that's okay. Two weeks later, she gave her life to Jesus too, amen. And I'll tell you, God did a miracle. I was chasing empty dreams. I'm here to tell you that you... We're on that road, and you were traveling that same road, amen, chasing empty dreams. But Jesus, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. <laughs> this is why he was able to stop me in my tracks. This is why he made, I did a 180, man. It was like, here I was, my coach was like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Listen, we didn't take that first fight. Now we have an option to get uh, fight the 1984 Olympics. Amen. Or we have the option to go pro. Amen. So I just had to win the Golden Gloves that year and get the, uh, you know, it was all planned. We're planning all these things out. Do, do I go here? Do I do this? But I got saved. I remember going into the office of my pastor, hardly knew Les Uptain, amen, just a little bit. I didn't know him that well, and I sat in his office. I said, I'm struggling. Do I try to make the 84 Olympics, or do I go pro? And he's looking at me, and he says, well, what do you really want to do with your life? I said, I want to preach the gospel. <laughs> and guess what? I didn't plan to say that. It just came out. And he says, well, then do that. And I'm like, I walked out of that place like I just get hit with a baseball bat. I was all dizzy, walking around. I, can't, I went home, picked up the phone, called my coach and said, I'm done. What is wrong with you? He called my parents. My parents were like knocking on the door. My rich aunt came to give me a lecture on how I'm from the ghetto and I finally got my ticket out of the hood. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm going to preach the gospel. That's all pastor had to say. Hello, he chose you. I said he chose you. Some of you have been idle, thinking, wondering, amen, still chasing empty dreams when God has chosen you, amen, to reach the world for Jesus. He's chosen you to impact nations. He's chosen you, amen, to have power of the Holy Ghost. He chose you. There ain't no bigger choice in life than to serve the Lord Jesus with all your might. And he appointed you, the Bible says. 
He says, you did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit. He appointed you and I to bear fruit. See, this is the father's passion. His passion is for souls. When I got saved, he put a passion in me for souls. He put a passion in me, amen, for the lost. I didn't have that passion for the lost. He put a passion to go do something for Jesus. He put a passion to reach the lost. Are you with me? Chasing empty dreams. I'm not telling you to just quit everything. <laughs> I'm telling you to serve the Lord with all you got. I ain't done yet, man. I just, just begun. Listen to me. Because our God is a good God. Listen, we need to have the Father's passion. Matthew 21 and 28 through 31 says, But what do you think? A man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. Which of the two did the will of, did the will of his father? They said to him, the first. Listen, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom before you. Who is he speaking to? Jesus was, 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 he was speaking to the priest and the elders. And why was he so upset with them? And why did he say these words? Because they la lost or had no passion for the souls of man. They had no passion for the lost. These were religious people, uh, amen, that were just happy uh, to be in God's kingdom. Uh, they would dress nice. Uh, they look good. Uh, oh, we fast. Uh, can't you tell? Look at my face. They put powder on their face. They would stand in the corner um, and say, look at me. Uh, I'm fasting. Uh, oh, I'm a man of God. Oh, shando robo bobo, shando robo bo she. Hello? And he says, where's your passion? What are you doing? When, when's the last time that you, you, you took God serious about fruit? Hello? Because he appointed you to go bear fruit. Oh, some of y'all don't like that. You mean you got saved? You got called? God did a miracle in your life? Amen. He delivered you from your past. He's given you eternal life. And then he says, okay, now I called you. I appointed you. Amen. To go bear fruit. And you say, you mean work? You mean share the gospel? You mean go follow up on people? You mean tell my family? He means stand, make a stand for Jesus. I don't know about you, but I, it was easy for me because I was going to hell. I could see us going to hell. The woman that I loved dearly, Berta, when we were youngsters, we got together young. I loved her so much. I was such a jealous young man. I didn't know how to handle it. I was too young. I couldn't figure it out. And I punished my wife for being beautiful. I locked her away like an animal. I'm here to tell you that God did a miracle in my life. When he saved me, he saved my marriage. He saved my children. He saved my grandchildren. I owe it to God. Just like Paul said, I owe it to God. Are you with me, church? See, Jesus declared, I have appointed you to go pair fruit and that your fruit should remain. See, how much do you care about the fruit that God has given you? Oh, people get saved. You know what gets me is like we get people getting saved. We get young people get saved. We get old people get, we get all different ages. And I'll tell you, the young people should be excited about young people getting saved. Look, Pastor, we got a young person saved, man. Woo! Man, we're going to have a Bible study. All the youth, we're going to win the youth for Jesus. Hallelujah. Instead, amen, they're sitting there playing their video games, not caring about souls anymore. Are you with me, church? 
Then you got a little older group. Amen. They come in and they've been through some sin. Amen. Maybe they're 20 years old. Maybe they're 25 years old. Maybe they're 30 years old. And then you got some 20, 25, 30 year olds. Amen. They don't even pay attention to these young people that come into the church and God saves them at the altar. And then they go home and nobody has a phone call. Are you with me, church? Can I just preach tonight? How much do you care about the fruit that God has given you? Because he appointed you, hello, and he brings people into the church just for you. Are you with me? Oh, but I'm selective. They got to be like, you know, uh, 35, male. And, uh, yeah, no, I think I'm ghetto. Huh? They got to be from the hood. Uh, they can't, you know, if they're too smart, you know, I can't, can't work with people that, you know. Uh, uh, hello? Can we just open our hearts to people like Jesus? Like the Father from heaven that opened his heart to you? Can we just be lovable people? Can we just care about one another? Can we just check up on each other? Oh, no, but I'm too busy, Pastor. Uh, hey, man, I got the TikTok going on. You know, I'm lining up with some TikTok. And, you know, I, 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 that's, I'm into the TikTok, Pastor. I wonder how I guarantee hell is full of TikTok. I got, they're gonna, uh, the walls are going to be painted TikTok. Because le- he got you so busy with yourself. That you can't be busy with God anymore. Are you with me, church? 1 Kings 3, 16, amen, through 27. Now two women were harlots. They came to the king and stood before him. And one said, oh, my Lord, this woman, I dwell in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I I given birth that this woman also gave birth and we took and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And then I arose in the morning to nurse my son. There he was dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is her son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living is my son. Thus they spoke before the king and the king said, the one The one says, this is my son who lives and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is dead and my son is living. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and the other half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. And the other said, let him, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. It's sad when it's not your own fruit. (laughs) Oh, it it, it doesn't matter whether they live or die. But this is God's house. (laughs) And it matters. Are you with me? It matters to God, the Father. Everyone that comes in the door matters. Listen, you matter to God. Oh, but there's somebody else's fruit. Oh, really? Brought them into the house so you and I can care for them. However we can. You mean we're going to have dinner again, pastor, another fellowship? I ain't going to be here. I got things to do. I don't have fellowships because I need to eat your food. 
My wife can outcook you any day. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we have fellowship so that the, the people that don't get to get fellowship with can come in and they can hear about God. Don't get in your little clique either. I, I got my little clique over here. You know, it's just us four and no more. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's about the lost. Cut them in half. No, 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 no. You can have them. Let them live. Just let them live. See, God, it'll come out, man, whose fruit that is, right? See, he says, go and bear fruit that your fruit should remain. All fruit matters to God. Each one of us is called to bear fruit. Oh, no, I, you know, I just come to church, praise the Lord. I like coming on Wednesdays. I like coming on, I like coming to concerts. I, you know, I get it, Pastor. You, you, I get, no, God called you to bear fruit. <laughs> oh, but I, I don't like to invite people because that little short Mexican up there gets crazy sometimes. That's all right. God will take care of all that. Amen. Oh, I don't, like, I, don't like to, I don't like to bring people to church because, you know, they might think different of me. Well, good. <laughs> Hello? Do they matter? Because they sure matter to God. See, when we labor in God's kingdom for the fruit and that it remains, God is pleased. And when God is pleased, God blesses his people. Are you with me? <laughs> Listen, listen what our scripture says. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This is after he says, now go bear fruit and that the fruit may remain. And then he says, and then ask your Father anything y'all like. Hello now. <laughs> so some of y'all like, well, come on, come on, I ain't blessed. How come I ain't blessed, Pastor? How come thing ain't happening for me? How come this, how come that? Well, maybe you ain't bearing no fruit. Maybe you don't have a heart for fruit. Maybe if you'd pour your heart out for others, and if God could use your talents, and if you would invest your life, amen, God says, you know what? Anything you ask, your Father in heaven, in my name, I will give it to you. Pastor Mitchell had asked a number, a number of men years ago to write a letter to him, telling them or telling him, what you desire for, what you want to do. And I begin to consider this. Here he's building a work for God and he challenges his men to write him a letter. What do you want to do? What do you desire? And I, I, I thought for a while, because you know one time, amen, one time Pastor Mitchell is preaching, and he's up there right before he preaches, and he's standing there, and I'm walking by, and, and you know, and, and so I go up there, hello, Pastor, how are you? Come up here, Mark. First of all, he remembered my name, and I'd be like, whoa, Pastor Mitchell remembered everybody's name. And he said, come up here, Mark. And I said, hey, hi, yes, sir, Pastor. He goes, listen, you know, I just came back from overseas. I, I was preaching for Bob Montoya. And, and, man, he's having revival out there. And he's walking with me, my hand, uh, my hand, you know, his hand over me like that. And we're talking. He's just kind of walking around. He said, you know, and, 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 I, and I, uh, Joe Luhan's in China. You know Joe Luhan? I go, yeah. He goes, I don't know what he does. I don't know if he's a plumber. But right now, he's a, he's a man of God, a missionary. He's telling me stories. He's so pumped. God is, he's just pumping me. And he goes, what are you doing these days? So I'm pastoring in Los Lunas, New Mexico. You know that big LL, you know the double loser. So I fell. But I'll tell you what. He said, oh, that's good. And he walked away and I said, oh, God, send me. If I could just write a letter. Send me in the next conference. Come on, somebody. The very next conference, uh, Pastor Greg Mitchell, his son, says, Hey, Mark, Mark, how you doing? Hey, and I went over there, yes, sir, Pastor. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, uh, what are you doing these days? Oh, come on now. Same spirit. He goes, oh, I heard you're an empty nester, aren't you? No, he didn't say that. He goes, We're gonna, we need to send out a couple overseas. You know any empty nesters? That means it's just husband and wife. I said, yeah, I think I know somebody. 
Send them to me tomorrow. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Talk about the heartbeat of God for the souls of nations. The heartbeat of God for Zambia. The heartbeat of God for Puerto Rico, amen. The heartbeat of God for these nations that we mentioned in Vietnam and, and Ecuador. The heartbeat of God. Are you with me, church? See, I believe God is asking you and I the same question. What do you desire for? What do you want to do with your life? See, God really wants to give you the desires of your heart. Are you hearing me? Listen to this. As I'm going to close with this scripture. It's a long one, but at least you'll be ready. Come on now. 1 Kings 3, 4 through 13 says, Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people before yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be no other or no any, not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. Amen. So in other words, here he is, uh, King Solomon. He asked, uh, let, just give me a heart. Uh, in other words, let me have your heart, God. You love these people to judge these people, to help these people. Uh, amen. Give me the heart of God, right? Is that what he asked? And God says, because you asked this thing, and you didn't ask for these empty dreams, I'm going to give you these dreams. Hello? Oh, God. I'm here to tell you that God will bless you. <laughs> when you do his will, he's going to... Are you hearing me? See, God wants to bless your life. You know, I love this about dreams. Because when God gave me the dream to go to Puerto Rico, it was amazing. It was real. And all it did was, uh, the first time was Pastor mentioned it over the pulpit, Pastor Mitchell says, you know what? We need men to go to Puerto Rico. And it hit me like a knife. Boom. Like, a, like an arrow. Boom. And the opportunity to go to Puerto Rico came up that night. Pastor Wilson says, hey, Mark, you want to go to Puerto Rico with me? I was like, what? I just said to God, God, I want to go to Puerto Rico. I'm going to get to go to Puerto Rico. He goes, yeah, we're going to go do a healing crusade. You're going to stay behind and preach a couple of revivals. I said, I'd love to go to Puerto Rico. Before that, though, God gave me a dream to go to Ireland. Listen to me. When I was in Puerto Rico, man, it was an amazing time. And God gave me the desires of my heart. Listen, God don't leave us hanging. So my question to you, are you chasing empty dreams? Or are you chasing his will? Because you chase his will, he'll give you your dreams. Are you with me? Let me have every head bowed, every eye closed in reverence to God. See, you're in this place. And maybe you don't understand all that's been ministered. But you know one thing, that God chose you. God died for you. 
Jesus paid the price for you. And if you're the only person in this place or even in, in the earth, God would have shed his blood for you. Because he loves you. Because not only do we dream, but God dreams. And God's dream is that we all can come to him. And that we would all be with him. He says, you know, I go to a prepare place when he went to heaven. When Jesus went to heaven, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. You know, put your name there. See, heaven was designed for you and I. He has a place for us. He's building a palace for us. Uh, he has a spot for you. But you must repent, the Bible says, unless you repent. Turn from your sins. You cannot be saved. Listen, if you'll repent tonight, if you'll surrender your life to Jesus tonight, you can become born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, forgiven of all sins. And that was the greatest experience I ever had, to be able to be forgiven of all the wrongdoings, all the bad things that I did. They just get washed away. Jesus did a miracle in my life. And if that's you, you need Jesus. If you're not right with God, you need to be forgiven. I want you to slip up your hand as a sign to God. Say, you know what, Pastor? I need Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to pray tonight. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to experience salvation. I want to experience the joy, the peace of God. I need a miracle in my life, in my home. I need Jesus. And that's you in this place. You'd say, yeah, that's me, Pastor. If you just slip up your hand, up and down as a sign to God. Anyone at all. Or maybe you're backslidden. You once repented of your sin and you served the Lord, but you went back into your sin. Listen, God loves you. The Bible declares that he is married to the backslider. You're backslidden away from God. Listen, Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He'd do it all over again. The cross all over again for you. And that's you in this place. Lift up your hand. Pastor, I need to be born again. I need to be right with God. I need to get my heart right with Jesus. I'm going to change the order of the service. You're watching online. You have an opportunity. He said, you know what? That's right, Pastor. I've been chasing empty dreams. I'm empty. I'm alone. I'm broken. I need a Savior. I want to pray a simple prayer with you. I want you to repeat this with me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I know you died for our sins. And I'm asking you today to forgive me, to come into my life, and to become my Savior. I pray today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. These altars are open. Amen. Get a hold of God. Listen to me. Get a hold of God. You did not choose me, but I chose you, appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask, the Father in my name, I may give it, he may give it to you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you have something for us, something very powerful. Help us tonight. Move for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus.
my Jesus is Lord. Sing it out loud. And my spirit magnifies the Lord. And my soul prays his name. And my spirit magnifies the Lord, and my soul prays his name, and death could not hold him captive, cause even in the grave, my Jesus is Lord. God, we worship you, Jesus. We thank you. You're worthy to be praised. Amen. He's worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Can you say amen? Oh, if we can catch the Father's vision, his passion, he'll bless us. He'll bless us. He called you. He, he chose you. He saved you. He didn't save you just so you could crawl under a rock. Amen. <laughs> to go buy you a shelter and just wait till Jesus comes back. No, 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 no. He, oh, he, he, he saved you to use your life for the kingdom. This short life that we have, the Bible says is, this life is but a vapor. A vapor. Boom, it's here and it's gone. Vapor, it's gone. Eternity's forever. Oh, man, we're, we're going to be stepping into eternity before you know it. Listen to me. This life is but a vapor. Oh, man. All I know is I, 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 want, I want him to stand there and say, man, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I'll never forget. I'm, I'm walking down. Here, here's our aircraft. And we're, wa we're walking with our stuff. And we're going to leave Puerto Rico. And God says, well done, good and faithful servant. And I broke. It's like, whoa. It's going to be better than that. When the rapture comes, we'll be getting in that nice jet. Woohoo! come on, somebody. <laughs> well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus is coming back, church. You better not blink. <laughs> you better be ready. Glory to the King of Kings. Amen. Don't forget uh, all that's going on this week, upcoming. Amen. I can't believe the revival's already here Friday, Saturday. Then we start our revival Sunday. Then there's right. Now we're busy for Jesus. It's going to be a good time, church. And then Zambia trip is right around the corner. Invest in Zambia. Give. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Watch what God will do. Come on now. I'm anxious about what God's going to do. I'm pumped about what God's going to do. It's going to be on your account. When we stand in heaven, God's going to say, like Pastor Mitchell, oceans of people from different languages, different nations, celebrating him coming in the gates. I guarantee you, man, this fellowship has done so much work overseas. I mean, the heart of God is so big for souls. It's going to be, when we step in, when, I know when I, I've invested so much overseas. I, re, I just know when I step in, people are going to be coming to me. Man, and it happens to me at conference. As an evangelist, I, people come up to me. My wife's like, who is that? And I prayed for them. And I gave them a word. This young girl was a crackhead. She was on crack. I gave her a word in a, conf uh, a revival. And I told her how God was going to restore her marriage. God was going to give her her children back. And that they're going to serve the Lord. And here they are as a family serving Jesus at conference. Hello. 
It was like, whoa, we invest and we give ourselves and God moves and we're just a branch, man, that's reaching out and we're a people that we're just all being used together to reach the world for Jesus. It's not just pastor going over there. I can't go without you. I can't. We do this together. Hello, somebody's got to go and somebody's got to be sent. That's how we do things. Let God use you. Amen? Okay. I better stop. Don't forget all that's going on Friday, Saturday. Street meeting. I'm going to preach. Street preach. You'll have a great time. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in a word of prayer. Amen. I'm going to ask if I could. Jim, could you close us in prayer? God bless you. You're dismissed.